Hey guys, thank you so much for being here and thank you for choosing to join us on yet another bike adventure. Today's starting point is on the Kattenburg Island. Behind us is the Maritime Museum, just to give you some points of reference. This island that we're on right now has a lot of rich history. But it all started in 1655 when the islands of Kattenburg fell into the hands of the Admiralty. This island was constructed together with other eastern islands like the Witteburg and the Ostenburg around 1650. Because there was once a cat here, not an animal cat, but a defense structure, this island was called Kattenburg. The Admiralty established its warehouses and shipyard here for the construction of warships, the most modern warships were built here. And today's adventure will take us if all goes well to the island of Marken. What is Marken? After a major storm in the 13th century and the fact that the surrounding peat bugs succumbed to excessive mining, Marken was transformed into an island and instantly caught the attention of the monks who saw this newfound insular location as an opportunity to build their monasteries. After occupying the land during the 13th century and the 14th centuries, the monks left when Amsterdam purchased Marken in the latter part of the 14th century. During the 17th century, Marke prospered with its booming fishing and shipping industries and the village's economy thrived until the early 20th century, when, in 1932, the Zuiderzee or the Southern Sea was cut off from its northern counterpart by the Afsluitdijk or Enclosure Dam project and thus put an end to the seaside town's primary source of income. Today, tourism drives the market economy, but so does its cheese and wooden clocks manufacturing as well. If you do it by bike, if you want to get to market by bike, which we really recommend, because it's the only way that gives you the chance to go through so many cute villages along the way, such as this one that we're entering right now, Ransdorp, previously also called Randorp in 1343, or Rarop in 1494, is a village which was until 1921 uh, independent uh, municipality in the northern part of Amsterdam. It's sparsely populated. The village has several national monuments and has a protected village escape. It's best known for the church Stubby Tower. This village, however, should not be confused with the previous Raasdorp, which, like this village, was written as Raasdorp on old maps. Dairy farming has been the most important activity for centuries until the 20th century Fresh milk went directly to Amsterdam in milk barges to be sold door to door. Ransdorp, together with Durgerdam and Holy Sloot, is part of a quiet area. This is a location perfect for cycling and walking recreation. The old village centers and the open, quiet characters of the rural area make it a cultural historical crowd pooler.
Another location that you will find on your way is Zuiderwoude, which is the oldest village in Waterland. There was already a small turf church on the site of the current church in the 11th century. In the 15th century, the village, together with Zunderdorp, formed the most important settlement in Waterland. Residents focused on fishing and especially on merchant shipping. Sailing connections with the Zuiderzee via Monikendam and the hinterland via the various watercourses ensured good accessibility by water. Characteristics of Zuiderwald is the compact riven development in the contrast with the openness of the meadow landscape and until the 1970s mainly farmers lived in the village. Nowadays the farms on Dorpstraat mainly have a residential function. The skippers of Zuiderwalde had an international orientation in the 17th century. They trade not only on the Baltic Sea, but also with the Suriname and the Levant, now the eastern part of the Mediterranean Sea. This gives the residents of Zuiderwalde a remarkable nickname. They are known as the Turks of Waterland. In the 19th century, there is little left of prosperity. When Zuiderwald was added to Brook in Waterland, the village turned out to have a significant tax debt. Fortunately, Brook is willing to repay this debt. With the sale of the church bells manufactured in 1623, Zuiderwald settles this outstanding account with the village council of Brook in Waterland. To this day, the church bells of Zuiderwald ring across Brook in Waterland. Guys, we were having yeah. coffee right there, yeah. but then we heard those voices like very close to us. So we're wondering who's who's in these bushes, but they're not here. They're right there. Where are they? All the way over there. They're right there. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Let me zoom in. I hope you guys can hear us. It's really windy here, man. But it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's very nice. Look at that, all those little homes, Dutch houses with their typical roofs. And there's a whole line of them that just makes for a really, if you love photography, makes for really nice pictures. Right here, guys, right here. All right, see you in a bit. Thanks. All right, guys, we're gonna enter. We're gonna enter the island. Almost. It's a strong headwind. Strong headwind. But we we persevere. Yeah. Yeah. We came, we, we saw, and we conquered. We shall not be. Stopped. Yes. We're now officially on the island. Officially on the island. True. We better start cooking. Until 1957, Marke was only accessible by ferry, both from Follendam and Monikendam. Since 1957, however, there has been a dike from Monikendam to Marke and asphalt roads run to the Mineweg in the northeast and to the lighthouse in the east of Marke. Without a permit, Marke can only be reached by car as far as the parking lot. There is one hotel on Marke with seven rooms, which can now only be booked as a bed and breakfast. The municipality of Waterland charges tourist tax for an overnight stay. Market can also be reached by ferry from Follendam. There is a ferry service all year round from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Every 30 to 45 minutes. 
In winter, there are also daily departures, depending on ice conditions. The written history of Marke begins in the 13th century. This written history, we have the monks to thank for, who arrived here around 1232 and established two huge farms right in this location. And in 1400, there were a lot of floods. At the end of the 15th century, Marke had about 250 inhabitants. By 1620, that number had already grown to 750 inhabitants. The arts did not appear to offer enough space. Instead of building new ones, houses were built on stilts. There was no real harbor for fishing yet. It was only constructed in 1837 and expanded in 1870. The construction of the Aufsladdijk in 1932 meant the end of fishing as source of income. Most houses on stilt were then adapted. The ground floors were closed and were thus used as additional living space. In 1916, there was a flood and it sadly killed 16 people on the island and left many people homeless. This disaster prompted the construction of the Afsluitdijk and the Zuiderzee works. Part of this was the Markewaard, the first part of which was the dike between Marken and the mainland. On October the 17th in 1957, the dike between the mainland and Marken was closed. Since then, Marken is no longer an island. This means that Marken is now a peninsula where the island feeling is still clearly noticeable. Can we zoom in? Oh yeah, look. that is gorgeous. Look at these homes. Just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. All right, sadly, I need to continue because I see a peloton of crazy bikers coming up our way. So. Oh yeah, it is Albert Hein. It is. So, in the worst case, we can always get some, gro some, some things to eat. from there. Oh yeah, this is nice. This is gorgeous. Look at that. That's gorgeous. That is so cute. That is really cute. It's a museum where they make wooden shoes. This is gorgeous, guys. Man, it's like, it's like a theme park. Only it isn't a theme park. It's real. And you are requested to move slowly if you're on a moving vehicle of any kind. Move slowly. 
I hope the camera is nice. I can't check on, on this bumpy road. I'm smelling fish, if I'm corrected. Fish being fried. Oh, wow, look at that. I don't know what way to look. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I really don't know what way to look. It's also gorgeous. Look at that. I've uh, planned a route through it all so we can just drive slowly. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. This is so cute. This is gorgeous. This is gorgeous. Beautiful. There is a lot to say of our gorgeous Dutch heritage. Look at these homes, guys. These homes are crazy beautiful, crazy cute. It's unreal. It's unreal. That's how gorgeous it is. Okay, I'm gonna step off the bike, Mikey. It gets a little crowded here. I'm gonna step off the bike. Wait. These guys, firemen. I think they're firemen in training, no? Or is it just a game? I think it's just a game. A fireman game. Also this side. Yeah, this is also gorgeous. This is really also gorgeous. Not really sure what those guys are doing. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh my God, this is so beautiful. This is so beautiful. Guys, can you believe how beautiful this is? So I was smelling fish. Cheese and gifts made by local farms, they say. just met that guy on a break where we sat on the bench having our snack they were on their motorcycles yeah there's a firefighter truck right here doing all kind of things with kids maybe you know to get them <laughs> To get them interested. 
It's crazy. I can't believe where I am. I feel like I'm on vacation in a different country. Could be. These are all the ferries going to Volendam and the other side of the water. I just can't believe what I'm looking at. I honestly feel like I'm in a different country. This is what you guys probably go through when you come to Amsterdam. And you see all this, this Dutchness. <laughs> you see all this Dutchness on one oh, spot. Dutchness. All this Dutchness on the same spot. And you're overwhelmed. That's why <laughs> I am overwhelmed by our own culture. I love it. I really love it. Look at that. This is the traditional clothes. There they are, all of them on the boat. That guy on the boat started as a kid. He started with a song. He, de he dedicated to his grandma. And now he's huge. Like a country singer, but more like the, the Dutch version of country singer. Guys, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. I need to show this. I need to show all of this to you. And that's why we're here. To enjoy and to share some of it with you. I just can't believe how beautiful this is. I literally don't know where to point my camera. It's also gorgeous. But I think where Mike is standing is a good point of view. So let's let's go to Mike. So these look like fishermen house uh, homes. Yeah. 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 It looks like a fisherman's village. Not anymore, but was. Yeah. It used to be an island, so yeah, this is probably it was all uh, this call it secluded. From yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is how they kept the, the the water level from overwhelming them. This dike here. See. Gorgeous. I'm really overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed by how cute and gorgeous this is. And I'm sorry about keeping readjusting my camera, trying to give you guys a good angle at all times. Plus, me and Mike need to take some pictures together here to commemorate this. Yeah. The GPS point ends here, so we're going to go back. But now we're going to look, we're going to see where we can have some lunch. That's a really good point right there. Um, where those people are taking pictures because that's the outmost, the furthest point of the island. So if you would stand there, you'll have almost all of the island behind you.
There's Mike. Guys, it's as gorgeous in real as you're seeing it now on your screen. Look at this, the first boat that I see here is called Triton. Love that. The fact that we're Disney lovers, story lovers. Well, you guys know what I mean. We need to film more. We want to film more, but we're hungry, guys. It smells like nice, delicious fried fish all over the place. We zijn helemaal geen stalling hè, voor de fietsen. Waar? Oh, hè? maar hoe kom je daar dan? Ah, oh, I get it. Oké. Okay. Ja, oké. Okay. We have some public bathrooms here for 50 cents. It's not bad. Oh, this is the tourist information center. Oh, this is tricky, mate. Be careful. Oh, this is this is really tricky. Yeah, but I'm here already. Oh yeah, this is really dangerous. <laughs> Should have taken the stairs. I should have taken the stairs. Yeah, yeah. but hard headed as I am. Yeah. Um, We're trying to figure out which way. You want to go that way, Mike? Or that way? Yeah, sure. There you can get mixed plate, all kind of fish and shrimps and calamaris guys this is the menu they have all kind of stuff including pancakes sandwiches and the price is really not bad i see eight euros nine euros really not bad croquette oh my god no this is one of my favorite songs of julio iglesias that is crazy but i don't want to get, get copyrights i'm gonna go for the mixed Mixed fish dish and mic. I think I've heard you say something about the burger special. Black Angus beef. Mmm. No, I'm gonna go for this one. Look at this view. Wow, look, look at this homemade uh, iced tea. My God, it's gorgeous. Beautiful, very Instagrammable. 
Yeah, especially from his side. <laughs> especially from this side. Look at that. Love it. <laughs> Guys, a good thing about visiting this village is that this ferry can take you to Follendam, which is a, another beautiful touristy village. At the other side of the lake, yeah, you can just get on this one. So you'll have two, two in one. You can visit this one and then go to the other side. Or if you end up in Fallen Dome, you can take the, the ferry to this place. They also have of course, all kind of soda, coffee, cocktails, uh, looks coffees, um, beers, wine, and cheesecake and cake and all that to go with your coffee. And again, the prices are really not bad. Cheesecake, five euros. So, uh, beer, because we'd like beer, three euros, between three and six euros. So, really not bad. Look, even. Yeah, they have a really nice music loop with everything in it, all kind of languages. Even what you get with your knife and fork, it could be a memor uh, souvenir in itself. This little guy keeps coming back. <laughs> so cute. He keeps coming back, standing behind Mike all the time. <laughs> Guys, you need to be quick. The boats are coming and going like really fast. You need to be really quick if you want to get on them. <laughs> look, after I tasted Mike's lemon uh, ice... Uh, look at that lady, so cute. It's really cute. I missed her. I was on the lookout for her. So that's how they uh, used to dress it. But yeah, so Mike's homemade iced tea. So good. I just had to get mine. And he gave me a different flower. Mike had this flower. And mine is this one. These are so good, you guys. If you make it to this place, get their homemade iced tea. It's really good. Guys, our lunch just survived. Look, look at Mike's burger. I love the bread. The bread looks good. Ah, oh, it smells so good. It's you huge. The burger is huge, guys. Oh, man, I hope I made the right choice. <laughs> I, I love fish, so I had to try fish. So I have mussels, calamaris, and lekebek. I don't know how you call it in English. It's so good. This is so good. This is really good. But I must say, the burger looks delicious. Man, I should have gone with the burger. <laughs> looks really good and it smells amazing. Not no, I'm not, no, I'm gonna enjoy my fish, I love fish. So guys, to top it off, we had to top it off, of course, cheesecake with fruit and whipped cream. Stroop waffle. Stroop waffle, uh, British Ambles, I know you're watching. Like, Stroop waffle. Stroop waffle. <laughs> Let me open it. This one. This mini stroop waffle. This one we dedicate to you. <laughs> <laughs> no. ah. I don't have a stroop waffle. Oh, I got the latte only when you get a cappuccino. And Mike or went. Coffee. Mike went for the caramel cheesecake. Good. Yeah, guys, it was really good. It was all of it. I went for the healthy option. Huh? I went for the healthier healthy. option. Yeah, or healthy so I option. keep my tell telling myself. Guys, the restaurant had also this free guide. Follow them on Marke. So we were at Marke, we're here at Marke, but the ferry can take you to Follow them. And you really should do, uh, do that option. I don't know, I can tell you. It's the Follow them Marke Express. Cheese factory, cheese tasting. My mom, my, my parents have actually this. I think everyone in Holland at some point has taken this picture as uh, Fallen Dam. Yeah. yeah. I think everyone does yeah, that. My grandparents had uh, also yeah. had that picture. My so uncle. We're talking my... about uh, 1920, 25. 
Yeah, it's cute. You should do it. You should. You guys should do that picture. This is this is all here. This one is here. Uh, there is also a house where you can go inside and explore. I think it's this one, but then you have to pay about four euros fifty cents for that. But I think it's worth it. That was really nice, all of it. Very relaxing. Hold a lot on. of fun. I got my headset. Get your headset. Mm. Wait. Oh, it was still on. Huh? Okay, so we now we just left that place that we were sitting, so really right about behind us, and then we're going to continue through this village. Mike says there is a, a, a light tower we should visit. That bridge is called Julianebrug. It's named after the grandma of our previous king. She was so sweet. She was something else. She was very special. And I see another beautiful church. I think it's a Protestant church. Oh, and a Velamina. That's the great, great grandmother of the present king. It's nice. All these bridges have the names of the previous queens. I don't know much about Velamina. We don't have, I, I have a lot of, I haven't seen an interview with her because it was maybe too long ago. I don't know if there is one. What? Oh, that's cute. Cute barbershop here on the right. It's also cute and cozy and small. Wait, I don't I don't hear Mike. No, but now you do. I forgot. I forgot. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> forgot to turn it on. I'm completely distracted. Yeah, me too. Uh, very beautiful. Yeah, look at that kitchen. It's just, this is something else. Just all of it. All of it is really something else. And just like that, we're back in this kind of environment. And what I like about this place is, yes, it's very touristy, but it's not even that crowded today. I don't know if it's the season, Maybe it's out of season. Yeah, it's the season's over for this year. Yeah, that's it. So it was perfect. You had to. Oh, look, a black swan. Ah. Uh, oh, it's a family. Yeah. Ah, that's nice. A family of black swans with the young, oh. younglings. A lot of them. They have a lot of younglings. It's a bit late in the season. Yeah, exactly. It looks like they haven't hatched that long ago. No. Look like uh, uh, balls of fluff. So cute. I hope they all will make it. Yeah, guys, that was Marken. Well, we're still on Marken. Yeah. Which was uh, basically an island previously. So we're now going to see if we can cycle all the way out to the, uh, to the lighthouse. We're now at the border of Marken. I can literally say, uh, see a, 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 mar a board that says 
you're leaving Marken. So we're along the border line. I am so happy that I had my bike fixed because it's this kind of speed, this kind of behavior that you sometimes have to bike. Uh, the way you have to bike sometimes for these little villages that made my bike squeak even more. And then you would have been the talk of the town. I would have been the talk of the town, the crazy of the town, the clown of the town. People would have talked to me with a lot of shame. But now it's not necessary anymore. Yeah, now you're saying, uh, well. Now it's just perfect. Okay, so we're going up here? I yeah. think so, yes. It says bike lane, bike route. <laughs> like so. <laughs> like so, yeah. All right, see you guys in a bit. Guys, you can look, if, if you, see, you look in the distance. Oh, yeah, right, there it is. If you look in the distance, right, right over Mike's right shoulder, you'll see the lighthouse with a beautiful, it's almost an old spice ad. Yeah, with a sailboat and everything. So, what do you guys want from us? What more do you need from us? We're giving you here Dutcher than Dutch. Dutcher than Dutch vibe. All right, we're gonna approach it and start filming again. See you in a bit. Now, yeah, have a vino. Guys, there it is in the distance. From a distance. Thank you, Val. Ah, those people were so sweet. I hope you had a good day. Boat gebleven. What oh, boat? Prachtig. Die boot die ligt daar als uh, foto opportunity. Ik zie het al. Oh yes, it's perfect. It's gorgeous. This is like a movie set. It is. Yeah, this is like, this is straight from movie set. I honestly feel like we're biking toward a movie set production and we're allowed to come and take a look while they're making a movie. That's, that's how I feel. That's how my head thinks right now. It's gorgeous. Wait, let me... Uh, this damn road is so bumpy. I, I'm trying to zoom in, but... down with me. Guys, it's so gorgeous here. It's so gorgeous here. It's so beautiful.
Oh, Mark pointing out that this is the city of Almira. Let's take a look. Let's get a little closer. Looks like it's closed off. Looks like it has a lot of junk all around it but it's marked as private property it's called the horse of Marken private property no trespassing you can also use drone you cannot use drones to film okay There it is. A lot of people are swimming. It's nice. Again, the private beach idea. It's nice. We came, we came that way. So the village is a little bit toward that. Somewhere there. Man, if I would, if I was living here, I think I'd be swimming here day and night. Just love it. It's so gorgeous. So it's private owned. I thought it was some sort of a museum, but it isn't. So guys, we're about to say goodbye to this whole thing, this whole village and area. It was good to us, so thank you. Yeah. But we're leaving little by little. This section of Holland. Look at all those cows. I was hoping we, we'd be able to get a little bit closer to the uh, light tower, but yeah, apparently it's because it's in uh, private hands. Yeah, so of course they're not gonna allow you to come any closer because it's, it's somebody's home. I get, I get it. I just don't, un yeah, I just uh, can be in private hands, yeah. I think if you pay enough, everything is, they say sometimes everything has a price. Look at all these beautiful cows. Thanks cows for all the milk. We have so much milk in Holland, thank God. It's a blessing. Milk and cheese. All because of these guys and girls. Guys and gals. We love you, thank you especially the gas, but it all came too late for me. I'm short. I didn't get enough milk when I was a kid, I think. That's why I keep saying to my mom to bug her. But my little brother that came to Holland, he drank a lot of milk and he's twice my length, seriously. Just like Mike. Yeah, see? So yeah, it's true. It really is true. Because why would be my little brother who has the same parents be different? All of a sudden, he's the tallest of us. He le when he stands, he literally towers about over everyone. I think he has the same, I think he's almost as tall as Mike, which is crazy compared to the rest of our family. So yeah, so Melk does that. I think that's why they're all so tall here in Holland. Milk and cheese. 
cheesy. The, the two essential building blocks for good bones. Them bones kept growing. <laughs> Them bones. Them bones kept growing. So guys, I know I said to top it off we had cheesecake, but then we went and topped it off for a second time and we took a little short break and we had some ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. We met some wonderful people. Hey, daar zijn ze weer. Hey, jongens, fijne dag hè? Fijne dag, hoi. We have one stop that we want to tell you about before we return home, which is this village that we're biking through right now. It's called the Dürcherdam. In 1421, severe weather caused a major flooding of the Zuiderzee, the St. Elizabeth Flood. To prevent a recurrence of such a disaster, the people in this area were given permission in 1422 to build a sea dike, which was called the Vaterlandseedijk. The village of Durgerdam was created in the bend of the dike. In the earlier centuries, shipping and trade were mainly means of livelihood. When there was less employment there in the 18th century, many residents switched to fishing. With the closure of the Zuiderzee in 1932, this source of income also largely disappeared. Durgedam now is designated as a nationally protected townscape since 1976. The vast majority of the buildings, including the village church and a building with a bell tower known as the uh, chapel, have been designated as national monument. The church is located on the side street of the dike. It is a water management church from 1840 with a cemetery. 
There used to be another church on the same site dating from 1642. It had suffered so badly from various storms and the 1825th flood disaster that the church council deemed a new church necessary. Many stones from the old church were reused during construction. The pulpit, some chandeliers and the shutter bell by Pierre Hemony were also taken over. The chapel is first mentioned in the church archives in 1499. It was rebuilt in 1687 and has since had non-religious functions such as a school and a town hall and is now used as a home. Durchdom became famous partially because of a dramatic event in the mid-19th the mid century in which three men drifted around on ice flow on then the Zardesee for 14 days. The severe winter of, of 1849 and 1850 caused a lot of ice on the Zardesee. This meant that many fishermen were unable to set sail for quite some time. On January the 13th in 1849, Klaas Klaassen, it's the name of the guy, went fishing with his sons Klaas and Jakob on the frozen Zuiderzee of Durgedam to earn some money. An ice sled was loaded with nets, sticks, a bone knocker and an ice axe. That's what they had with them. After they had already caught quite a few bones, huge cracks suddenly appeared in the ice with big bangs. The three fishermen eventually ended up sitting on a large floe and so began a wandering across the Zuiderzee. They survived sometimes by eating the raw flounder until after uh, floating around Follenhofer for 14 days, they were spotted by some fishermen there. The three Durchadam residents were cared for in Follenhof, where the father and eldest son died and were buried. The youngest son luckily survived and returned to Durchadam. So we are now at 1174 kilometers with today's trip.